Today we're going to take a look at some common optical instruments. Uh, they've been around for a lot longer than you probably imagine. The first eyeglasses came around uh, about the late 1200s in Italy, and the telescope was invented about 300 years after that. The first optical device we're going to take a look at is the film camera. It's a very simple device. Light comes in the front, and the lens forms a real image on the back here. In the old days, this would be a film strip, and uh, nowadays it would be some kind of computer chip that would convert the light information into an image. How much light is let into the camera is controlled by the aperture. The aperture is adjustable and can be widened or narrowed to uh, control the light input. Very, very simple device. The next thing we're going to look at is a telescope. A telescope primary purpose is to take an object that's very far away and magnify it so it seems up close. So if you have an object that's really far away, the best you can really do is use a converging lens and create an inverted real image that's reduced, which you would create right over here. Um, if you use a second lens though, what they call the eyepiece lens, you can view that real image and create an image that is, while still inverted, is quite magnified. Okay, so you're basically using the second lens as a magnifying glass to look at the image that's created by the first lens. For ast astronomical telescopes, that's fine. We don't mind if the image is upside down because we don't want too many lenses involved because they do not transmit 100% of the light. When the telescope's to be used to view things that we don't want to be upside down, let's say we go to a baseball game or we go bird watching, uh, we'll use a third lens to reinvert the image so we can see it right side up. A compound microscope is similar to a telescope. The, the biggest difference being that we're viewing objects that are not far away. So we actually have the advantage where we can create, uh, use the first lens to create a real image that's enlarged. We now view that enlarged real image with another lens, the eyepiece lens, and we can create a very enlarged final virtual image. We can get a lot more magnification out of a microscope for this reason than we could out of a telescope. In a lot of ways, the eye is a lot like a camera. Light that enters in the front through this transparent covering called the cornea is slightly converged and then passes through a thing called the iris. The iris is very similar to the aperture in a camera. It controls how much light is let in and it can expand and contract. When the light enters into this area, this is the, the actual lens of the eye, it's uh, converged even further. And the idea is that it will be focused on the very back of the eyeball on this area called the retina where the brain will then take uh, this information and form it into an image. Now the retina is not a uniform area. We have our best vision in the center in a place called the fovea. And in the fovea, we can see a lot more detail than we can around the periphery. We also have this interesting place where all the optic nerves come together and it's actually our blind spot. Now we don't really notice the blind spot for two reasons. The first one being that we have two eyes and one eye fills in the blind spot of the other. The other, it's not in the center. So generally we're not looking in that place where the blind spot is. Another thing that our eye and a camera have in common is that the real image in the back of the eye is inverted. In a camera, you just flip the film upside down. In our eye, the brain does it. It's a remarkable thing, but our brain is a pretty remarkable organ. The principal difference between the camera and the eye is in focusing. In a camera, the distance from the lens to the film is adjusted to create sharp focus. In the eye, most of the focusing happens at the cornea, but then further focusing happens at the lens. Our lens is soft, and it's surrounded by a muscle called a ciliary muscle that can squeeze the lens and change the focal length. So when we're looking at things far away, as in this picture, not a lot of converging needs to happen. And so the muscles relaxed and the lens has a shorter focal length. When things are up close and the light that's entering the eye is already diverging and more converging is needed, then the muscle squeezes down on the lens, changes the focal length, and focuses again on the back of the retina.
There are three types of common defects in vision. Uh, one's called farsightedness, then there's nearsightedness, and the last one's called astigmatism. With normal vision, you can accommodate and see objects from about infinity, the far point, down to about 25 centimeters at the near point. Uh, not everybody has this normal vision. Farsightedness is when somebody has an easier time seeing things that are far away than things that are up close. Uh, the most common cause of farsightedness is actually old age. As we get older, our muscle in the eye, the ciliary muscle, becomes not as strong and the lens is not as flexible. And what happens is the light focuses behind the eye and a blurry vision results. We can correct that by putting a converging lens in front of the eye, which further converges the light and makes it focus where it's supposed to on the back. These type of lenses can be bought at the drugstore for 10 to $20. They, you don't need a prescription. Commonly known as reading glasses. You maybe have a grandparent or a teacher who uses reading glasses. Fortunately, it's something that most people go through as they get a little older. Nearsightedness is when a person can see things that are up close but not far away. In most cases, this is because the eyeball is actually too long. This can happen when you grow. I had perfect vision until I was a teenager, and then it just went bad. The problem is, is that light is focusing too soon. It's focusing in the middle of the eyeball instead of on the retina. The way we correct this is by using a diverging lens that spreads the light out a little bit and causes it to converge where it's supposed to, which is on the retina. These lenses need to be prescription lenses, and that's what you go see your optometrist for. Astigmatism is a defect of the eye when the cornea is curved more in one direction than the other. The vision is not focused into any one spot in the retina, which causes blurry vision uh, all over the place. They fix this by special glasses that are kind of barrel-shaped. That can correct this particular vision defect. No lens makes a perfect image. The defects in lenses are called aberrations, and we're going to look at two of those right now. The first one's called spherical aberration. It has to do with the shape of the lens in which the outside rays, these ones out here, are not focusing to the same focal point as the ones that are closer to the center. The result of this is that it's a little bit fuzzy on the outside, and this can be fixed by using multiple lenses to correct what's going on around the outside. The other type of aberration we're going to look at is called chromatic aberration. We learned before that blue light and red light do not travel through glass at the same speed and therefore they don't refract the same. This can cause two different focal points for these two colors and everything in between. So you get a spreading of the colors, some dispersion, and that's not good for our image production. This can be corrected by using lenses of different types of glass and the combination of which can actually refocus all those frequencies back to the same spot. Bright light helps us see better in two ways. First of all, it provides more light, that's pretty obvious, but also it causes the pupil to contract. Most of these lens aberrations happen around the edges of the lenses, so small pupils eliminate those aberrations from affecting our vision. Thanks for joining me and happy physics.
Thanks for joining me and enjoy your physics.